thank you very much. And thank you very much, John, for hosting this event in Stockholm. Very much appreciate it. I think this is an important subject we need to continue to talk about also in Stockholm because we are a large fintech hub already in Stockholm. And I think we're happy, very happy to see a lot of people of you joining us in the, in the fintech industry here in Stockholm. So actually, I mean, for me, it started with NASDAQ, actually with Times Square. Many of you may have been at, in New York and been at Times Square. And maybe 15, 20 years ago, I was there initially. And I stand in front of the Times Square sign. And I said, what a cool company. And I could never imagine I would work for that type of company. But here I am actually now working for NASDAQ, which is fantastic for me. So how many of you know about blockchain before you came here? How many of you know, keep your hands up, how many of you knows Bitcoin? Even more people, or almost everybody would say. And that's kind of exactly the same for me. For me, I actually looked back. In April 2014, I sent out an article uh, for my business unit from the Swedish magazine called New Technique, which I believe most of you read here, that talked about Bitcoin. And I sent it out to, to all the people in my business unit, said this is something interesting we should start looking to. And then a couple of weeks later, was a sales guy calling me up and said, hey, Johan, I have someone, uh, some, some customer here that would like to understand more about blockchain. How do you know everything about blockchain? I was, oops, shit, I need to reread that article again. <laughs> I was going. But that's how it started for me. That's how I came in contact with Bitcoin and blockchain. And luckily, I had uh, Nasdaq behind me that had been working with, with the blockchain for some time before that. So I could start to gain more and more knowledge and talk to, to the experts in, in New York. So, what is it then? What, what made Bitcoin so famous and blockchain, so to say? And it's really, I think we all know about internet. Everybody's been surfing on the internet. We see all the information floating around. It's easy to send emails, send photos, PDFs, etc. So it's really an internet of information, so where we can distribute data very, very easily. But, I mean, you always make a copy. You send a photo. To, to someone else. You keep the photo with your hard drive and you send, send it to someone else. I mean, to be able to transfer money, money, it would be fantastic, of course. If we could issue, I have $10 on my hard drive and I send $10 to you and I keep $10 and you get $10. Fantastic, I will soon be a billionaire. But that doesn't really work. So that's actually what was sold with this new technology called the blockchain that powers Bitcoin as one example. It solved the problem of double spending. So I could no longer make a copy of my $10 when sending them over to you, to the next person. Instead, they were removed from my account and sent to someone else. And this was done without any central counterparty, without any central bank behind this. What we have today, we have a lot of digital assets. A lot of things are digitalized already today, like money, certificates, shares, etc. But they're all controlled by a central authority all controlled by a central bank or by NASDAQ or, or by other marketplaces around the globe. But what made blockchain interesting also for us was the possibility to actually do this without the need for a central counterparty. So think about that. That's a totally new shift here. So what we're talking about is really the internet of value. I mean, today we have the internet of information. And today, we start to see the era for internet of value. Can we create that? Can we create a global community to transfer digital assets just as swiftly as we send a PDF file today to transfer money, transfer equities, assets all across the globe? That's the nirvana, the dream of blockchain, which we are looking into. And I think a good example of, of uh, how you can apply blockchain in our world is in the tickets industry. I think we all bought concert tickets and uh, you get a PDF file sent to you from, from the provider of, of, the, of the concert. This PDF file, very easy. I mean, if you don't want to sell it secondhand to someone else, well, it's a bit risky here because I transfer the PDF file to someone else. He buy the ticket for 600 crowns or something then how can he or she be assured that I'm not actually going to the concert? So once again, if you apply blockchain on this, I would be able to register my ticket in the blockchain network, and then we can both be assured that while, when I'm sending my concert ticket to the next person, I will not be able to use it. It goes directly to the second person's account. 
The same, I think, uh, here in Sweden we have a, a firm called Lantmäteriet, who is uh, looking after the land registry, keeping out who owns what, which house. It's also a good example for where you could start to use blockchain. I mean, here in Sweden we have a rather trustworthy economy. We trust Lantmäteriet, that they will keep track of who owns which house. But there are other countries less developed in trust, which might be able to benefit from blockchain. Because blockchain is very much about, can you create trust in the network, rather than more trust in the network than the trust in the central authority. That's the belief of, of blockchain. So instead of having all the trust put into Lantmäter yet, you could put all your trust into the network. And we together in this room can form such a network where we help each other to validate transactions and, and make sure that I'm not trying to double spend my money or what asset I have on, on my account. Medical journal, journals, I mean, I think we all travel a lot nowadays. We travel around the globe and you all have a medical journal here in Sweden. I mean, someone is kind of know a little about you at least, where you're born, what's your blood type, etc. And what if you have an accident abroad? What if you could actually then give the keys to your medical journal for that hospital, for them to read, oh, okay, are there any medicines you're not, uh, you, cannot, you cannot have, for example? And if they can update your medical journal, what they've done, how they cured you when you were abroad, and on your way back home, then your, your hospital, your doctor can read the same data about you. That's also another good example of, uh, of how you can use blockchain. And then we all heard about uh, Airbnb, haven't we? Uber became rather famous now. Uber revolutionizing the taxi industry. By, I mean, you don't need the taxi company anymore. Instead, you have your app, you book your car through the app, etc. Very good. Airbnb revolutionizing the hotel industry. So they really disrupted those type of industries or starting to disrupt them globally. They came really, really quickly on now to start to revolutionize that type of business. But what I'm saying here is that blockchain can actually disrupt the disruptors because we don't need Uber anymore. We don't need Uber anymore, uh, sorry, Airbnb anymore because we can replace those with the blockchain technology. That's the future. So, looking a little then, of course, this is a fintech scenario, I guess, so because blockchain can be applied to a lot of different industries, as you understand, insurance industry, etc. But, I mean, we should talk about the finance industry here and uh, how it can disrupt the financial industry. And I would say it can offer you completely new ways of doing business because the way blockchain can shortcut processes, cut out intermediaries, Today, a lot of the finance processing is built from 30 years ago. There were manual processes, telephone calls, faxes, etc., being sent around. We put those workflows into computers. So we never really disrupted that type of industry, especially in the post-trade side of how to issue and settle uh, securities. So in the finance industry today, I mean, in, in, for example, in the mutual funds industry, there can be as many as 10 different intermediaries participating in a transaction. Before you are able to get the fund onto your account, it hits 10 different intermediaries. So it's a long process, it's a huge cost, it takes time, and a, a lot of reconciliation going on for sorting out okay, who actually owns the fund at this very moment. But blockchain, then, is very much about shortcutting the processes. So thinking of a world how we, as, as broker-dealers or as individual people, can actually, and we heard that before from, was it Nordnet, talking about how we would like, actually, more than 55% would like to be in control of the asset. With the blockchain technology, you can get the keys to your assets directly. And over the blockchain network, you can transfer that asset to someone else in a secure way, in a fast way, and also in a transparent way. So very interesting. So instead of having a financial economy as we see today with a lot of intermediaries, local custodians, global banks, etc., this could all be replaced by a more peer-to-peer -peer community. And I mean, you all here are used to Swish, how we are now able to actually 
quickly send money. So I think another good example of what blockchain could do is to have you can quickly send any type of asset like you do today through the Swish application. So think about that. You could have micro markets popping up all over the globe. You could send money everywhere. You can make a trade with anyone anywhere in the world at any time. Today, the markets are only up and running five days a week. So what if you could do that 24-7? So it's a massive revolution that, uh, that probably will happen to our financial industry. And that's exactly what we are looking into at NASDAQ. To see how could we revolutionize this, how could we change the processes uh, that we currently have. So at NASDAQ, uh, we really like to be the innovators. We really like to be there out first. And we have done that since 71. I think we heard that from, from uh, Peter talking about how we started the electronic markets in the States at NASDAQ and began to, through computers, actually replace the floor traders. And that continued. And here with OM, we also heard a story about OM starting up here with an options exchange, derivatives exchange and start to trade derivatives. So we really like to be the frontiers and we invest a lot now in new technologies. We heard about machine intelligence, which we're working a lot on, on the cloud and, uh, and cryptographies, as well as blockchain. So it's a major investment within our, within our business. And here in Stockholm, it's actually the largest FinTech hub of NASDAQ. Think about that. We have 600 people working on development in our Stockholm office. So we have the largest uh, development center of NASDAQ. Then we have another one in New York and a third one in Sydney. And a couple of more smaller ones uh, spread across the globe. So what we do here, we develop these new technologies. We build products that we can use both for our own markets. We run exchanges, as you know, here in the Nordics, the Nordic Exchange. We run the marketplaces in the States. So we have 24 own markets. But then we also deliver the same technology to 85 more marketplaces around the globe. So we have a huge business, more than 100 markets run our systems globally. And there's a lot of push on, on to blockchain to see how can that affect, how will that affect my business today. And blockchain can help us in two parts. Both we see how blockchain can give you new possibilities, new revenues, new money coming into your business. Because you can find new types of business by the help of blockchain. The other part is blockchain can also help you to streamline your existing businesses. It can, it can kind of speed up, uh, speed up transactions, it can lower the risk, and it can reduce the cost for reconciliation. So you both have the disruptive approach where you can change, you can win new business, as well as where you can then streamline new businesses um, with blockchain. And what good is, I've talked about, I've been, talk, uh, I've been working with blockchain, I started three years ago. And actually, we already are live with blockchain already today. So we actually launched our first application in production in 2015. So that's two years ago. So we already gained a lot of experience. I think there's a lot of discussions, if you Google, etc., and you see and talk to customers, etc., there are a lot of discussions, how can we use blockchain? How would that affect my markets? There's a lot of proof of concepts being done and being built. But we actually overcome those already, and we are already in production. And during this year, we, are, we will very likely release a couple of new, uh, new solutions that can put into production already this and coming years. So we are already there. I would say we, we are leaving the R&D space. We believe blockchain is here to stay. It will change Wall Street. And we will be able now to see, we start to see the, the light in the tunnel, so to say where blockchain can make, make it happen. Then it's still, a, it's still a huge challenge, I would say, from moving from a proof of concept into actually launching something in production. That's something completely different. The proof of concept normally hands a sunny day. Everything looks good, everything is working. There's no bug in the code, so to say. But then to move into production with something, you need to handle all the default cases, all the scenarios that could occur even when the days are rainy. You need to also work with the legal and regulatory uh, uh, institutions to make sure that you still comply. As we heard before, we are heavily regulate, regulatory, we are heavily regulated, uh, as well as from information security. 
Today we have really, really tough information security policies within NASDAQ to make sure that no one can get access to the data, can change the data. With blockchain, it's a completely new policy that needs to form because you're about to share data with each other in a completely different way. So that requires updates also to information security policy, for example. So that's, uh, there are things we're working on now to see, okay, how we, can we now in an efficient way and in a safe way continue to deploy blockchain use cases and also start to spread this uh, around the globe? So that was kind of a short introduction to blockchain. I have a lot of more to share, but I mean, I think the time was a bit limited here to a couple of minutes. I can talk for this for a day or so, but I hope at least it's also kind of a Kickstarter for you to get to know that blockchain is here already. We are working heavily with it. And please come and join us and, and, and cover new ways to do business and help us to improve the financial technology in our world, because also as Veronica said, I mean, we're here to change now. It's really a catalyst for change. Uh, we are sponsoring a fantastic uh, initiative called Women in Tech. Uh, so next Wednesday, everybody is free to join, men and women <laughs> are free to join an event. We're actually doing an opening bell in, in our Stockholm office. You can learn more about our company and get to know us a bit more and hear a couple of presentations. So come and join this free breakfast. You can ring the bell and get to know us, so Wednesday next week. So thank you very much.